Thomas Goss with the fourth installment in an ongoing series of videos reviewing the new sounds from the Sibelius 7 upgrade. So far, we've examined the percussion, harp, and keyboard sounds, which all have a high level of realism, and the wind sounds, which are a big step forward in quality over previous Sibelius sound sets. Now let's take a look at the string sounds, definitely a mixed bag by comparison. While there's no question that these sounds are far, far better than previous Sibelius sounds, they are up against some stiff competition from East-West Quantum Leap and Vienna Symphonic Library. This sample of the Brandenburg III was made using the chamber string sound, which has a nice raw feel to it, though the violas sound a little starchy in their higher register. Let's listen to a sample of Beethoven using the main orchestral string sounds to see how it works symphonically. As you probably noticed there, a little cold when the strings were unaccompanied, but sounding better as they warmed into the phrase, and then not too shabby in combination with the rest of the orchestra. Realistically though, there is a limit to how live you can sequence string sounds, especially within the format of the Sibelius architecture. If the main purpose of these sounds is to give you a good impression of tone and balance, then the developers have achieved their purpose. I like the way you can fine-tune the release dial to make the strings more legato. Still. Just like the winds, there is a missing expression dial to increase or decrease the level of vibrato. The developers seem to have gauged the level of vibrato to react dynamically, which is a solution that fits a traditional approach, though it can be limiting at times. Check out the end of this sample here, and how the whisper of the bow becomes more and more apparent as the volume drops. That's a very accurate picture, though it has a bit of a glassy sound with the reduced vibrato. Now let's have a listen to the strings playing a heavy tenuto section. You'll hear another one of my gripes. The attack on the string smart knobs is set to 0%, yet it's just not biting enough. Though at first this demo has a lot of impact, after a while the ear starts to pick out a certain uniformity of phrasing that sounds awkward, a sort of fwa 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 envelope. A real string section would fall on these notes like a hammer blow. <laughs>
so the standard string orchestra sound, though it's very nicely done and balances well orchestrally, still needs a bit of fine tuning. Let's check out the solo violin sound for comparison. Wow, what a bad sound. It's almost like a concert violinist making fun of himself, and that's not good. I mean, I know these sounds are intended primarily for reference, but that's the kind of thing that would have made Mendelssohn burn his manuscript. What's worse, there are no smart knobs for attack and release, meaning that you can't soften that crazy bowing or make the phrasing smoother. It's a tone that's really intended for over-the-top, manic soloing, and just like the oboes and clarinets, it shows that there needs to be a softer, more lyrical option. But strangely, when this same sound is used as part of a string quartet playback, in a lower register and lower volume, it's actually quite good. That's not so bad, even a trifle poetic, though nothing near the subtlety and fascination of a halfway's decent quartet of live players. Maybe the sound developers should make patches for solo string instruments that are really specifically for concerto playing, and let this sound stay for quartet playback. Sibelius' seven strings offer a wide variety of special effects, most of which can be accessed through the playback dictionary with a simple word or notation replacing the current sound with a fully realized alternate patch. Sibelius 7's pizzicato sound is fine, as you'd expect, being one of those sharp attack, short duration waveforms that's so easy to sample. I like the way that the pluck has a touch of fingertip scrape, and the way the lower strings snap slightly from time to time. Speaking of snapping strings, the Bartok pizzicato patch is also pretty realistic, and manages to capture some of the resonance of the instrument, not just the pop of the strings against the fingerboard. The next demo is for my friend Cesare Valentini, who wanted to know if the Colegno sound was realistic. It's pretty good, except there's no Colegno for double bass. For my orchestration students out there, this is a special string technique of beating the wooden part of the bow against the strings. Here's a sample that I think says it all, and also gives you another listen to those lower winds. played back in perfect time, but still pretty lifelike. Once again, the sample touches on the resonance of the body of the instrument, not just the rustle of wood against metal. It's a well-designed sound, but not every special effect string patch is this good. I have a real problem with the tremolo sample. It's too intense and forceful, as if recorded from string players who are giving it everything. What's worse, the violin tremolo sample is about 300% louder than the violas, cellos, and basses. Ridiculously melodramatic, like a cartoon villain twirling his mustache. Granted that there will be some times that you'll need the tremolo to dig in, but actually, tremolo is one of those effects that more commonly is used as a softer, more mysterious color. 
Check out this example from Debussy with tremolo strings. I faded the levels on the strings way, way down, but you can still hear how they sound tense instead of eerie. As you may have noticed in some of the demos in the Wind Sounds review, the softer special effects like harmonics and mutes are quite nice. Let's revisit the demo from Debussy's Image for Orchestra for a sample of both. That's great, but here's the problem. Sibelius 7's program architecture does not allow for tweaking the attack and release on the alternate string sounds, as I mentioned before. When you're calling for pizzicato, tremolo, and colegno, it doesn't matter. But when you need muted strings, it makes a huge difference, especially since muted strings are often asked to play legatissimo, with phrasing as smoothly connected as possible. Smart knobs simply cannot be set so that muted strings play ultra-smoothly, and it really shows in certain types of scoring. Listen to the strange gaps between phrases in this demo using the muted sound. Now let's compare exactly the same passage using the standard string sound, but with the release smart knobs dialed up to 57%. As you can hear, a huge difference. The meaning of the music suddenly stands out very clearly. So my final rating of the Sibelius 7 string sounds is a 6.8. These sounds are a very big improvement on the Sibelius 6 sounds, and they balance pretty accurately within the larger orchestral palette. I like the usability of the strings, how they've integrated into the user interface, and the insight that the sound developers have shown in trying to bring these sounds to life. On the other hand, there's still far to go in allowing the user to humanize and finesse the strings, and it's frustrating that special effects cannot be adjusted, particularly the muted strings. Maybe some of those smart knobs over at Sibelius could work out a way of giving us more control over the shape of phrasing and intricacies of tone, while keeping it just as simple and usable as the current program? That's what I'm hoping for by the next upgrade. <laughs>